Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar featuring one of Vectra's customers, Talink. My name is Shree Sheth, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. A little about Talink before we begin. Talink is the leading provider of high-quality mini cruise and passenger transport services in the Northern Baltic Sea region, as well as the leading provider of cargo services. If you travel in that part of the world, you may have found yourself on one of their cruise lines. We're excited to have Talink here today, sharing their experience with our product and explain their security operations in detail. Let's cover some housekeeping items before we begin, and then we'll get started. The recording of this session will be shared with you after the webinar. If you have any questions, please type them in in the Q&A chat box at the top right of the console, and we'll address as many as time permits. We've also listed a handful of resources we think you'll find helpful. You can find these resources at the bottom of the console. Moving on to a quick overview of our agenda. In this webinar, we'll briefly discuss what the Vectra NDR platform is. We'll then hand it over to our friend and customer at Talink, who will share his journey with NDR, how he integrates Vectra with other security tools in his stack, and examples of his Vectra instance. With that, I'd like to quickly introduce our speakers. First, we have Kalev Noor, the Head of IT Operations and Infrastructure at Talink. And next, we have Oliver Tavakoli, the CTO at Vectra, who will be moderating the conversation. I'll let both of you take it over from here. Thank you, Shree. Um, so, uh, love having uh, this conversation with, with Kalev. As a start, though, I think um, it's probably useful to put Vectra in the context of the rest of your security ecosystem. So, you know, we view the world as having, you know, substantially shifted over the past, you know, five or 10 years from kind of a traditional view of networks uh, to one that's become a little bit more disaggregated in, the, in this kind of zero trust world. And, and almost everybody in the midst of the pandemic is, has some kind of a zero trust um, project going on. Um, so in this, in this world, um, yes, you still have your data center. Yes, you may still have kind of your campus environment, but you also have elements of cloud, public or private. You have elements of SaaS applications uh, that are out there. And so, so in this world, you know, how you defend yourself um, against attackers, there's obviously the mobile endpoint. Um, I, th I don't think uh, people buy really desktop systems anymore. Almost everybody obviously has a laptop. Um, there is a need to kind of harden access to uh, cloud if you have uh, public cloud presence, uh, which a lot of companies do, as well as to your data center. Uh, and again, cloud can also mean SaaS applications like Office 365 or Google Work or, or anything like that. And then last but not least, on the network side, you still basically need an ability to kind of detect and respond in this new world. So if you, if you look at uh, what Vectra does basically in this new world is it allows you to effectively tap into information sources in these various enclaves. Um, so you can, you can place sensors into your traditional network environment um, where those sensors come in touch with packets. Um, and this is kind of the traditional NDR play whereby you extract metadata out of those packets. And then amongst all of that metadata, you, you apply a fair bit of machine learning and, and artificial intelligence to, to attempt to kind of find attackers as they kind of get into your environment and then progress through that environment. But similarly, you can do that within your AWS and Azure footprint. Um, both in terms of ingesting uh, traffic as well as ingesting logs. You can do this in your kind of public cloud, uh, in, in your SaaS application and public and, and cloud identity um, presence. So looking at things like Azure AD, looking at things like Office 365. And so all of that stuff kind of ultimately then comes together uh, and presents uh, basically in one console, uh, you know, any things that look like attacks as well as stitching those different behaviors in these different enclaves together. So if you look at the overall Vectra platform, then there are really multiple elements to it in from a use case perspective. Yes, we can 
We can protect and, and detect attacks in your traditional network. We can detect them in places like Azure AD and Office 365. Um, that's primarily kind of a detection and response capability. There's also an investigative capability called Cognito Recall, which allows all of the information, um, the raw metadata underlying all of those detections to be maintained for a period of time, be it two weeks, four weeks, uh, three months, and used for investigations, used for threat hunting, um, as well as Cognito Stream, which allows that same data to be stored in a data lake of your own choosing. Uh, so, so effectively, what you then have is the capability to detect, to investigate, to threat hunt, to respond. Uh, and all of this stuff then also kind of com comes with implementation services, uh, a service called Sidekick, which is effectively you know, managed uh, hunting and investigation, as well as help with incident response. So that's my you know, um, high level overview of what Vectra is and, and what the platform does. So from here, uh, as Sri indicated, uh, we'll, you know, we'll have a conversation with Kalev around the journey uh, that they've had with Vectra. And so what I'm gonna ask uh, Kalev to do to start with is just describing the journey ultimately that led them to implementing Vectra in their environment. Hello, uh, thank you, Oliver. Uh, my name is Kalev Noor. I'm the head of Telling Infrastructure and Operations. So about the Vectra, uh, we've been, uh, it's, it's, um, NDR is nothing new in our organization. We've been using it since uh, 2018, not the Vectra, but another solution. Uh, and uh, this far, our experience has been that actually it's a very useful tool, but uh, we are getting a lot of information from the tool. And uh, somehow we have to understand what this information, is it relevant, not relevant, uh, how to fine tune it and how to handle this information. Uh, so, uh, in our experience, uh, before the vector was that actually we got uh, countless number of activities. Uh, all the time, something was really going on in the network. So, uh, so we get the notifications. Uh, we try to go over them, uh, but we were not uh, as successful uh, as we expected to be. Mainly, the reason has been that uh, as we are. Uh, uh, as as uh, we have to look our resources very carefully, and if the tool requires us to do a lot of work around it, then uh, uh, then th this might be like a heavy challenge for us because actually what we want is that we would get this notification if something is really really wrong, and uh, and we have to deal with something that's really really important, uh, and how could we manage this way is that actually actually to get this really important information. So previously we tried to kind of configure the system and, uh, and also make the system to understand uh, that some information is not necessary and what is the type of information uh, what we want to see. Uh, generally NDR by our experience uh, was very uh, was, was a very necessary tool. So uh, when our previous contract ended, then definitely we wanted to continue with NDR, as uh, we really saw that to give this, to see this insight in a network, uh, and and to understand what's happening, especially if your network is quite big, then uh, th that was still relevant for us. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, so. Uh, Again, you know, the same questions uh, raised that, uh, that how to get this, uh, how to get this overview of the endpoints uh, when you have uh, limited resources, uh, how, to, how to manage these resources and how to manage the cost because one, of, one side of the cost is only like the cost of the tool when we are talking about NDR solution. But the other cost related is uh, administration overhead, administrators, uh, 
help desk uh, people who are really working with the tool, how much time it helps them to save. So again, without the NDR, uh, to get all this information would be almost impossible. So NDR is necessary, but at the same time, where to make this balance? What, what, what is that what we are expecting from the NDR? And, uh, and how to get it most, uh, most effective way? And also how to know what is important and uh, what is not important. So uh, initially our plan was actually just to extend our uh, current NDR agreement and, uh, and not to look around too much. Uh, then, then when we started to negotiating around the new agreement, then we discovered that um, that the price has went up quite significantly, and uh, as uh, we got kind of a hit from a COVID, as uh, we are a transportation company and a hospitality company, then it forced us to look more wider, and uh, and we decided that okay, let's uh, let's give Vectra a try run. So. Actually, initially, my expectations was that the Vectra is kind of second best uh, option on the market. And, uh, and we expected that, okay, the second best, it can't be too much worse than our, our current solution was at that time. And, uh, and we just tried to get uh, a cheaper solution that wouldn't be not much worse and the current solutions. That, that was our expectation when we when we started this process. And uh, then we started to run, uh, and, and then we run Vectra, and uh, and we, we got surprised actually, because uh, then we saw actually it's, it's the same issue like uh, how to manage everything and how to have less noise around you. And then compared our previous solution and current solution, it was like a night and day. So so we saw a lot less noise. That, that means that we have more free time to do other tasks so that our team can really concentrate <clears throat> concentrate uh, on the Vectra and manage everything that Vectra is giving out. And, uh, and also we could uh, uh, really see that what is important, what is not. So Vectra has this uh, nice screen that's, uh, that's uh, highlighting like high, uh, high medium and, and different like thread types. So, so uh, it's very simple UI. Uh, that impressed us because our previous solutions, the UI was uh, really fancy. So you could, uh, you know, for, for presenting for management or doing something, it, it looked really, really nice. But uh, the usability, uh, when you are doing, uh, when you are doing uh, something, then Vectra was a lot, lot better. So, so it, it really surprised us. Uh, and then we thought that okay, hey, it, it, it looks nice. Uh, UI is actually it's not uh, fancy. It, it's okay, but it's not fancy. But it's very usable and uh, and system. It's uh, it's a uh, very easy to use actually. Uh, so if previously we had to have a special training to use the system, then uh, Vectra was like a very natural process for us. Maybe it was partly because we already knew what is NDR. But the other part definitely was that it was a system that's very easy to use, and uh, and we didn't put we didn't need to put uh, too much effort uh, into that. But okay, then we then we thought our next thought was also that okay, it looks nice, it's let noise, but does uh, does Vector really like catch all all the things that are necessary? Maybe it's less alerts because uh, it's not as good in a job as our previous solution. So we thought, okay, let's, let's do a trial run and, uh, and uh, look, it, look it over how it looks like. And uh, again, uh, we got a surprise uh, because all important things and what we tried out, uh, then uh, we, we got all these uh, things with Vectra. So, so again, what I told previously is that, uh, that how to get this like really important messages in, it, it kind of fulfilled it. So, 
So everything that we tried, we got with Vectra. And uh, our previous solution, actually, is that we thought it's uh, what we estimated, it's, it's supposed to be better than Vectra. It actually didn't catch the, all the things uh, that we looked so uh, so it, it 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 was it was a surprise it, it really was uh so we um, when we got the results we were kind of amazed and uh talked with uh, with that time brand provider and uh, told them also that okay we run a test run and some things uh, we didn't saw actually that the uh, previous solution didn't detect it so they looked inside and uh, and had some uh, suspicious uh, and, and thought that, okay, maybe you did something wrong or we didn't have all data. And no, 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 guys, you are getting all the data, but somehow it was not detected. So so after looking the issues with them, we, we concluded actually that, uh, that, yes, Vectra really performed better. And in that point, uh, we came to conclusion that actually Vectra is not like... Uh, best alternative if, if looking price and quality but actually it was uh, on a quality side it was number one and it was easier to use it was a lot less noise than previously uh, learning curve was easy and uh, also detection of things going on in our network it was also excellent so uh, so I, I really liked it actually and and also my team so uh, and then we thought that okay uh now we now 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 we are serious because if previously we just thought that okay let's look at alternatives and then try also to force our main provider to maybe go down with uh the, with the price then actually we came to conclusions that uh, we want vectra in-house because it's easier less noise less work and working nicely and um, yeah and and uh, then we started to talk with Vectra so uh, so finally we came to conclusion that yes indeed let's uh, go on with Vectra so it was a great surprise for our old uh, system provider as uh, as they thought the last moment that okay we gonna still continue with them and uh, and of course uh, since they wanted back on board, so I can't even tell that Vectra was the cheapest solution. It was not, but it was the best solution. So, and we are very happy with it. Uh, so, implementation when we when we took our first NDR uh, solution, then it took us uh, three months to implement. With Vectra, we did the same inside the one month. I, I can tell that it was uh, it was because of the Vectra entirely because uh, when we when we installed uh, this previous solution we had to also set up the hardware and all the span ports and so on and so on so with Vectra everything was done already so we just had to connect it and it started to work out of the box but anyway it, it was very painless and it worked nicely. Uh, also, another point that was very important when we tested Vectra, I'm just jumping back uh, now, is that uh, as we are a shipping company, for us, uh, it's also important that, uh, for example, on, on board our ships, if something, uh, some data center will go offline, then uh, do the systems resume automatically. So that criteria also was fulfilled by Vectra and everything uh, worked uh, really, really nicely. And yeah, then it took uh, one month, and uh, we were up and uh, and running, and uh, also said also the configuration and setting it up, uh, it was easy, and compared to the old solution, it, it was a lot lot easier. So so I could tell that Vectra is a very practical system. And uh, there are better systems if you want just to make a live demo and show how, you know, really all alerts are running and, uh, and scannings are done and so on. But if you really need to do everyday work and, uh, and discover the things, then that is very, very 
nice tool for it and we are very happy again so uh next slide so um kind of as uh, obviously uh it, Talink is kind of a unique environment in in the sense that um you know, as the slide implies, uh, you have computer equipment on ships and other kinds of things like that. When you kind of think broadly about EDR versus NDR, right? Like you obviously you get vis certain visibility for, from EDR, but I'm assuming like your environment doesn't consist entirely of laptops that have endpoint agents and stuff like that. And talk, talk a little bit about how you think about visibility with regards to kind of EDR versus versus an NDR product like Vectra in your environment? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we, so what, one is that, okay, you, you can get all alerts from the endpoints. And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, this is something that's like happening in a, in a concrete endpoint. But uh, the big question about EDR is also that, uh, that what do you actually have in your environment? So, in my opinion, when, when for example, uh, looking at the NDR solution and also what this, um, what this uh, benefit uh, is, uh, is uh, really this like gray IT, uh, shadow IT that's, uh, that's uh, coming to your premises. Something is somewhere connected. Despite you can have this all those policies in organization and uh, and everybody knows that okay you should not connect something somewhere. Still we have a lot of cooperation partners. We have ships. Uh, somebody want to install some probe somewhere. Somewhere appears some Raspberry Pi. Uh, something going on because somebody still even if you have policies and and uh, and the network segmentations and things then uh, some people still think that okay somewhere i can plug this one this this system on and and it will be there silently so again uh, like we had title for for this webinar it was how we toss the cyber criminals over the board so i, I would tell that uh, that uh, uh, it's actually not imp <clears throat> not important uh, getting rid of cyber criminals. Uh, it, it is important at the end, but uh, very important goal is how to reach there that uh, you don't have cyber criminals inside your organization. And uh, and in my opinion, this shadow IT it's it's a it's a very dangerous thing. Because uh, because there can be devices, things that just sneaking into your network, and uh, and they can uh, you don't control them. There is e even if it's like really patched and nice device initially, then it just living on its own uh, life, and finally can be a vulnerability in your network. So Vector is really really excellent uh, about those things that we see if something appearing and uh, doing something uh, doing something strange uh, so yes now we have this campaign view so uh, I, I call it uh, like inside house we call it as an asset view not campaign view because here is visible very nicely that uh, actually some asset where, where it communicates uh, what what is the environment around it, what what it does, and uh, and and you can you can really get an overview of what's going on. So so again, Oliver, about your question about EDR. Mm -hmm. So EDR is uh, really good if uh, if it's your environment, your devices, and uh, and you get uh, feedback what's going on in the endpoints. But there is a uh, life after the end point so so, so uh, it, it it means that actually there is many things going on in your networks that your endpoints might not know at all it, it doesn't concern them but but it's still there it's happening and uh, and the more you wait the more it will be like uh, like uh, it's the more it can be dangerous for you and your organization so, uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I hope it partly answered your question, Oliver. So. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I think it's interesting to me that, you know, I think for a lot of our customers, you know, they have traditional office buildings, and 
shadow IT oftentimes ends up being more a question of um, you know, SaaS applications being used that they don't intend to have used, right? And so that's one version of shadow IT, but there's the traditional notion of shadow IT, which is devices plugged into your network that you don't know and that you don't control. And I think with Talink in particular, where you don't just have an office building, where you've got a bunch of moving buildings, basically, um, it's harder to just imagine yourself walking around and and physically inspecting or, or, or noticing that something is plugged in that shouldn't be there. Um, so I think it, it presents kind of a unique challenge when you have effectively a distributed um, a set of buildings that are moving moving on the ocean at all times, right? Exactly, Oliver. And, and it's not like like chips are nowadays, they are like uh, full of high tech. You, you, you have like screens, you have computers, you have clients, uh, uh, so on, so on. So, so just, just as an example, so we can have in, uh, we, we are the biggest kind of telling internet provider in on Baltic Sea. So it means we can have like 15,000 simultaneous devices online on board our vessels. So, mm-hmm. uh, so, so say, say are only clients, but extra to that, we have all like from cash registers to TV screens and so on, so on. Um, so, so, so if some device just, you know, appeared to the network and, and maybe TV is replaced and it's just a new TV or so on, so on, it, it's quite hard to track every time. So, so I would tell that the shadow IT, 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 it's one of the biggest challenges that we have to overcome because, uh, because every ship contains thousands of devices and, uh, and how to understand if one of them uh, will, uh, will appear. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, then, uh, Oliver, anything else or I will continue with, with some slides? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so so some some examples. Uh, uh, I I didn't uh, I, I didn't set up anything like uh, a big show or or actually we don't have any any cases that are like really critical and I could show you that you know here attack came to our network and then we caught the guys and finally like uh, did something with them but uh, but there are things in the network. So and, and and the things are going on. So uh, so again. So so here is one uh, internal scan uh, scan example that's uh, that was going on in our office. So again to get it and then understand who was doing, why it was doing, and and why it's important. Uh, so next slide. Sure. So, so I think Vectra, obviously, and NDR in general, is part of your security ecosystem. I think uh, you know we don't we don't have the hubris in in believing that you know we are the only security solution that you will need. And so it's interesting to kind of talk a little bit about how Vectra plugs in to the rest of your security investment and what integrations end up being kind of valuable as you think about about. You know, you're looking at what's happening on the network. You're looking at endpoints, SIM, some of these other other kinds of solutions that that kind of most enterprises have. So, talk a little bit about where you invested in in, that, in the integration front. Yeah, exactly, Oliver. Because uh, in nowadays world, it's it's everything in IT. It's about integration. So, so you can't have a single thing standing that that uh, doesn't talk with anyone else, and then expect it to, to do a good work. So, so again, shortly, shortly our uh, integrations and things, as uh, I, I have to tell in the beginning already, is that um, we, we don't have a big presence in cloud. Uh, and and uh, why is it this? It's because of our moving data centers. So again, the data communication on board of the ships is expensive. And uh, we try to leave it mostly for our clients and internet browsing, not to use the cloud services too much. So every ship has a, has a small data center, and due to that, we don't have a big presence in the cloud. 
So ju just to tell it out in the in the beginning. So uh, what we have, we have uh, Seam. So uh, we have integrated the solution with Microsoft Sentinel. Uh, with with uh, Sentinel, uh, again, uh, we try to censor only the data that's really relevant. Uh, the main, uh, b because uh, we got a lot of feedback that why you're using Kai Sentinel, because it's so expensive. Uh, it, it can be if you feed a huge amount of data to the Sentinel and you, you have to really like uh, send do something to find useful. We, we are like looking at the data what we are sending and we want to send on useful data. So uh, so Vectra has integration with Microsoft Sentinel uh, and, and it's our SIEM system. So we can uh, we can look at alerts together with uh, EDR and, uh, and our other ecosystem and to understand if something goes wrong. So again, it worked out of the box and, and working really nicely. So, so uh, yeah, we, we are very happy about it. Uh, then EDR. Uh, EDR is, uh, we are using Microsoft Defender. And, uh, and the main goal is actually that if um, Vectra discovers that something is going on in the network, uh, then, uh, then we can uh, tell to the EDR. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry for the noise in the background because I'm actually on a, a, our cruise line and the ship is departing. So we have some security notification in background. So, so please, I, am, am I hearable or should we, should you, we wait you, for you're, a minute? You're, here. you're fine. Yeah, okay. So I, I'll just have microphone closer a bit. Um, yeah, so uh, so we have uh, Microsoft Defender, and um, and the idea is that uh, if something going on in our network, then uh, Defender can uh, isolate uh, uh, the host automatically. Vector can tell to the Defender uh, why we are looking this automation uh, so carefully is uh, because even if you're taking these ransomware attacks, then uh, usually traditionally it's done that. Uh, uh, after working hours on the weekends during night time. Uh, so automation is very important because if you're just uh, relaying uh, on the people on everything and, and you don't have your full team working 24-7, then, then for the morning you could have a huge problem. Uh, so the CDR uh, integration is, uh, it, it is very important. We are we are also looking looking now this next step to integrate uh, with our network devices. So, for example, if there is some device uh, in the network that doesn't have our own EDR solution installed, then we can just block it uh, on the network level entirely, and and this device can't get to the network. So, this is the next step what we are planning uh, and and want to do. So. And, yeah. and yeah, and the, and, the, and the key is that we should have instant response. Something is wrong, and if the data quality is good, uh, the data quality again it's very important because compared to our previous solution, if uh, if data quality is not good, then you end up blocking half of your network, and you really don't want to do it because uh, still business has to work. You you don't want to block anyone who doesn't need to be blocked. So. So that's why I'm underlying data quality again, because data has to be good, and uh, the guy who's blocked really has to be blocked. Uh, not that you are in the morning waking up and discover that half of a company can do the work because they're blocked. <laughs> they're blocked. Uh, yeah, and, and then Office 365, we are getting some alerts uh, from there as well, and, and we can do some actions according to those alerts. So. So yeah, I don't have too much to add. Or yeah, no, but but it's an excellent point, right? I think people tend to kind of focus on okay, what's the response strategy and how real time is your response? But if you don't believe in the quality of the signal, if you have too much noise in the system, then you know you can take a bunch of response. But as you say, it's that it's that knife's edge of. You want to take response where you where you can head off disaster, but if you start operationally impacting the organization, 
uh, by taking response, uh, you know, as a result of effectively false positives, then you are effectively impacting the organization. And in particular, I, I would imagine in in you know in the office taking you know somebody off the network might be an inconvenience on a ship you know taking something off the network might actually operationally impact um, uh, what what that what what that ship can do and so so the quality of the signal becomes becomes kind of super important uh, absolutely oliver because uh, ju just uh, for your imagination we are like most of our profit we earn during summer months that are like uh, in the summertime three months and mm -hmm. Believe me, I, in IT, we don't want to be the guys who are like in the morning uh, finding out that we isolated 100 workstations from the network. And those guys yeah. can't do the work. And, and even worse, if it's on board our ships, it could have impact to the clients. And, uh, and client satisfaction could go down and it could have impact to all companies. So, so for me, really, this data quality actually is uh, is everything. This is like everything starts. If you have bad yeah. data quality, you can't automate because then you can't do right decisions. You do wrong decisions, and when you do wrong decisions, you do wrong things. And when you do yeah. wrong things, then bad things will start happening. No, I, 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 I totally agree. And I mean, I think I think the other kind of interesting thing is the the range of responses that are available generally you know, our strategy has been rather than, you know, implementing something that say sends a TCP reset or something like that on the network to actually, again, from an integration perspective, integrate with your EDR, with other capabilities that you have to exert your will in a variety of places. And if we can be the high quality signal that can send the right trigger at the right time, as you indicate, ransomware attacks, these modern ransomware attacks that are kind of everywhere in the news these days, oftentimes we see them explicitly happen in off hours on the presumption that if you're going to do four, five, six hours of work, um, you know, a, a fair number of companies just don't have, you know, 24 by 7 SOC operations mm -hmm. with eyes on glass at all times, right? Yeah, and, and even if you have a SOC, you have to have like other engineers available. You, you really need a massive system to handle it manually. And yeah, and, uh, yeah you, you can do maybe in, in, in some parts uh, of the world, but in Nordics and in uh, Scandinavian area, we are like human workforce is not a cheap thing to have. And really to have engineers like 24-7 available, you no, nobody really like does it. You automate as much as you can, and uh, you want to squeeze out from the systems that you purchase. It's like automation, intelligence, and and uh, way of dealing with the things instead of solving it manually. So, so in in that sense, we are very happy with uh, with our vector solution. Cool. So, Shri, are we are we at our closing? Uh, a, should we wrap up? I guess commentary and then and then and go into Q and A. Is that is that kind yes, of where we are? Yes, that sounds like a great point. If there's anything, Kala, that you feel we missed, or you would like to touch on, we'll cover that. And then we did have a few questions come through, so we'll address those right after. Uh, yeah, I would just underline again, uh, like main things uh, for me. Uh, number one thing is data quality, so it's very important. And other thing, don't underestimate uh, shadow IT. This is this is something that that can be a knife in your back in a very wrong moment, and uh, and can really affect you because everything that's under your control, you you upgrade it, you secure it, you manage, you look. You you have this life cycle in the hand, but if if you have shadow IT, something that's entirely living on its own life, nobody maybe upgraded, no patches, nothing, and it gets like more and more dangerous, especially if it's your network. So so two things: data quality and shadow IT. I, I think this is like very crucial for every organization, and everybody should uh, look at it carefully. So, but I, I think that's it. So, so let's move on to the questions if you have some. 
Wonderful. So call of the next handful of questions are all for you. So get ready. <laughs> the first okay. one is how do you focus on key assets in combination with NDR? I think you touched on this a little bit earlier, but this question is asking for you to explain it a little more in detail. Uh, key assets in NDR. So, so if I understood right, and how, how, how in NDR we are looking like the most important assets in our network. I, I, I really, for me, how, how to focus more, it, it's kind of a hard question because in Vectra, as uh, Vectra is monitoring everything and, and also it's, its key assets are monitored with Vectra as they are in the network. Uh, if it's if it's question related to the vectors, and I would tell that I, I don't do anything specially for the say, key assets. So so we have Vectra, uh, we try to use automation, and and that's it. So so I I don't see that there is any anything special we really need to do about it. Yeah, I, I hope it answers the question. Thank you, thank you for your answer. So the next question is. What is your network throughout C? Do you have monitors on the ships for OT, IOT? Do you offer free internet for your passengers? It was actually just, yeah. ju just a slight correction. What is your network throughput at C? There we go. <laughs> network throughput? <laughs> yeah, uh, on C actually, we offer a free in uh, inter internet to our customers because in our region, we are really not used to charging for the internet. So customers can get the internet. Uh, we have some speed restrictions uh, on regular clients and uh, higher class clients can get completely like uh, uh, yeah, limit limitless um, internet. Uh, so basically, our connectivity on the ships, that's, uh, that's also, if somebody's interested, we, we can do more than 600 megabit traffic. So 650 we've seen. So uh, so it's uh, usually on the ships, it's, I believe we are one of the top companies in the world. And again, who can give out those, those speeds. And we can roughly take 2,000 passengers, uh, some ships more, some little bit less. So So... Yeah, and and this is a true boot. <laughs> so I, I hope it answers the question again. Yes, no, you're doing great. Yeah, you're I, doing oh, great. And, and just to, just just to tell us that 650 megabits is a true boot. It's per ship. It's it's not for all fleet. So it, it it's mm -hmm. a one ship. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm, cur I'm curious. Is it is a do you use kind of cellular networks or, or what kind of technologies on the on the back side of that from the ship to? Yeah, yeah. O o o Oliver, if you want to know about it, I have a, like a one hour presentation about it. How we do it? <laughs> it's, it's a magic. It's it's uh, it's completely another topic. Uh, how we do it? We are we are using very shortly directional antennas from the shore, and we are using the telco mast. We we have our own network built out. Uh, wow. And we are using like uh, yeah, we, we are using a lot of antennas that's uh, uh, around Baltic Sea, and uh, yeah, it's it, it's another one-hour topic. So as it's not <laughs> so much to the vectors, and yeah, I, I can I can explain it some another time maybe. <laughs> another time, definitely. So, call of a couple other questions have come through. This one is a little more specific. It's asking if you have any tips on creating custom triage filters and also when to choose between marking as custom compared to creating custom filter. Ho, ho, ho. Um, that's, a, that's a hard one. I, I, I just have to think a bit. Don't have set on. So I think I think the distinction here is between potentially, you know, seeing one behavior at one time, right, and saying, okay, that one's okay, versus saying, well, this behavior is going to occur more in the future, and so we should we should basically create a filter for it and moving it into the yeah, future. Yeah, we are, we are talking about this triage, yes. Yeah. So, so so about triaging, we are. We, we create it when we are completely sure 
that we we can like triage it. so so we we, we don't we don't use it uh, so much that that uh, you know just for case in old system we used a lot more because it was so much noise that we really had to like get the noise down somehow with uh, vector mm-hmm. is a lot more intelligent some things of course there are and we triage it when we 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 are like absolutely sure but definitely not when uh, like uh, in a hurry to to triage it. We, we, we don't do it in a hurry we, we are if we are sure then then, then we do it yeah I, I think that's that, that's the best practice obviously um if you if you see it once, you know, and it's okay, but it may not occur again, you might want to see an alert if it happens again, but eventually if you if you see it a few times and you're sure about it, you've investigated it, then, you know, then you can declare something kind of benign in your environment. And that's that's best practice that we can see with other customers as well. Yeah, absolutely, because I'm, uh, yeah, we, we, we don't do it like light-handedly that, you know, let's, Let's do it. We, we we take it quite seriously, and mm-hmm. when we already do, then, then we are like really one hundred ten percent sure. Cool. Okay. Three. Three. Next Thanks, question. Colin. Next question. So this question is asking if you use Vectra for threat hunting at all. Yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> um, that was the yeah, question. It's, so you answered yes. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's an NDR. So, so yeah, yes, okay, definitely, great. yes. <laughs> good, good. The next question here is around your integration with Microsoft Defender. This person is asking, what other integrations on your journey do you have in mind in time? Uh, what, what integrations we want to do more? You mean, or, or it's yes. uh, yeah. Uh, basically, uh, basically, it's a firewall and network devices that we're looking. Uh, we we don't have it right now, like a clear roadmap how we do, but there are possibilities in Vectra. So, as I told previously, it's a case when 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 there are computers in your networks that are not managed by your environment, like your EDRs and how to really isolate those devices. So this is something that's on our mind and we are looking at it. So, so, so yeah, we, we, we don't have kind of a fully working plan yet, but I think in next uh, six months, we want to put more resources over there. Great, thank you. On the network side, do you, you don't have something like a NAC solution or something where you can kind of isolate at, at kind of like a port level or like an individual thing, right? Uh, no, right now we don't use it, but uh, but this is something we are kind of uh, thinking and working about it. Yeah, about uh, integrations and it's a vCenter is also what we are looking so. Mm-hmm. So this next question, Khalid is asking, it's in res- it's regarding how your team responds to anomalies. Do you perform any form of automated response when Vectra identifies an anomaly or are responses managed by your security team directly? Yeah, we try to automate as much as possible. Uh, so, so yeah, we are looking into this automated response and also we have the team who's looking basically over what's happening and trying to do corrections if necessary. Okay. Nobody Thank you. wants and nothing to know about Oliver. Every all questions are for I, me. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they're all they're all for you. The next few questions, I'm gonna combine a couple of them because they're all regarding your previous NDR solution. So you touched on Vectra taking about a month to fully implement. This question is asking how hard was it to remove your previous solution and replace it with Vectra? And how did your previous solution react when you let them know that you would be switching NDR, NDR solutions? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's replacing. It's not hard when you have uh, hardware in place. So you, you just, uh, it was, it, it's really easy. So that's why also with our first, uh, with our first solution, it was, uh, I have 
background here, another security notice, so I'm sorry about it. So basically, uh, basically in our first solution, we had to like uh, look at all this hardware and network, and that's why it was, it was longer. But of course, when we let our first uh, first provider to know that okay, we're gonna go with Vectra, uh, they were really ready to discuss the price. What they initially raised fifty percent, but uh, then I told also that that I started to look the second best alternative for us, and it became like the first alternative, not uh, not alternative, but the first solution for us. And uh, and guys were pretty. They told that you are making mistake, and I know we we made the tests actually. And according to our tests, uh, it's really the best solution. And and we initially thought it's the second best, but uh, but it's not. It, it is the solution. At least for us, it's the best solution. Looking our our manpower, team size, and uh, abilities. So. Great, thank you. thank you. The next question we have, given that your company has a multitude of suppliers and vendors constantly using your portals and websites, how do you use Vectra to help proactively identify and protect your resources and network from vulnerabilities and environments belonging to your customers, suppliers, and vendors? It was a long one, so. <laughs> You can repeat it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 would, I would just, if I understood, like, um, ideas in or the question in the right way, so, so Vectra is not the answer to all questions. Vectra is mainly used for looking what's going on internally in our network. What's, uh, what's, uh, what's like external perimeter? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a different question. So, so it's it's like web application firewall, and and uh, I would tell that this is uh, not topic of this webinar. So we we have solutions over there as well, but it's it's not related to Vectra in that sense. Ve Vectra is uh, inside the company internal network, uh, and and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's the thing with Vectra. So. If outside something bad will happen, then Vectra doesn't uh, know about it. Yeah, to, 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 reiter to reiterate, I mean, Vectra's, Vectra, and, and this is kind of true for most NDR solutions, right? They they sit generally inside your firewall. They, they, they look at everything that's kind of gotten past your first line of defense. There's obviously a number of network security products, be they firewalls, be they web application firewalls, be they, you know, web proxies, secure web gateways and stuff like that that are meant to kind of protect your perimeter where where your network comes in touch with the big bad internet. Um, NDR solutions tend to sit behind those generally. Yeah, and it's our case as well. So, so, so Vectra is not a miracle tool that you buy Vectra and you don't need anything else in IT security. Vectra integrates nicely with different tools. But you still need, you know, your outset perimeter and 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 so on, so on. So, so it, it's very good tool in in a right place. What it's doing, but but it doesn't solve your another uh, your your another thing. So, okay, three. Uh, Great. Anything more? There's a few more. Are you ready for them? <laughs> yeah, sure. This one, this one is around your deployment, so it's a specific to. Do you have a brain on each ship or a sensor on on each ship? No, we, we have a sensor. We have one brain. Great. Thank so, you, Caleb. So, so the 650 yeah, megabits yeah, so, so every 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 of uplink you have can you know can accommodate the amount of kind of data that needs to be sent to the brain. Yeah. One brain. That leads them all. It, it's like this uh, one ring that leads them all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and this next question, Kalev, is for you, which integration is the most valuable? Oh, it, it, it's again, it's, it's, I, I would tell it's not, uh, not a easy, you can't just tell this one integration is is like say integration yeah it's integration with edr it's definitely it's definitely valuable what i see so so ability to isolate things in the network so so i see a great value in there 
Uh, Sentinel also, I see a great value sending uh, sending data there and send uh, data from another source, as putting it all together to get a broader view. Uh, in the future, what we want, like uh, with different network devices, uh, to do this integration. So, so I, I see that is, that will be also a great value. So, so, so I, I can tell that this is like this is say integration. It's it's about cooperation between different IT security components, and everything is important. You you can't underline that this is saying. Yeah. Yeah, a combination, right? It, that's always a good mix and match for for your specific needs. This this next question is more on the business end. So when you were switching from your previous solution to Vectra and you needed to get your budget approved, what tips can you give other organizations, other IT security organizations in the best way to get budget approved for new tools that you're trying to add to your environment? <laughs> it's a, it's a very it's a very nice um it's a very nice question. I, I could actually <laughs> tell us that our, our previous solutions that was very flashy and and uh, you could see like this uh, global view of everything happening uh, uh, was a better sales point uh, uh, than, than our current thing, uh, our current solution like Vectra. But Vectra is actually a lot more valuable if you do actual work. So if we talk about marketing tools or we talk about, uh, you know, a real works that has to be done. But but it, it's, again, be honest, because what's uh, what's going on in the world? If, if, you, if you look at all these ransomware cases in a shipping industry, it was also because our management uh, kind of uh, in, in, in this situation, we want to not to go up with the cost. Same time, other shipping companies who had issues with ransomware. So you have to keep your executives informed and uh, explain them that uh, why something is uh, necessary. Also, explain how uh, IT security is working. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, in some sense uh, people who lead the company might think that okay, this is antivirus or or this is like this is IT security. You're secured, but. Uh, but but it's not like that. You have the outer perimeter, internal perimeter. If you have thousands of IPs doing something, then nobody can track it manually. You 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 have to automate. How you automate? Uh, what are your HR expectations? And uh, and how you can do more with less? Like uh, how to have uh, qualified people and uh, uh, smart tools? Because it, it's the same thing if you have. Uh, if you have a really good uh, people doing something, but you don't give them tools. But imagine that you take a builder who will build your house, but they don't have tools. They can be excellent builders. But if they're using hand saw and, uh, you know, they don't automate, then they can be really excellent guys, but they will be dead slow because they do everything manually. It's, it's the same in IT. Good people need good tools to provide excellent results. And you have to communicate the results. Right. You, have, you have to show what's actually going on. Right. Yeah, I, I hope it, it answered the question. I th yeah, wonderful response. Thank you, Kalev. I And we are also coming up at the top of the hour, and I want to respect everyone's time. So with that, we will close out Q&A, and we will wrap up. Kalev, thank you so much. Uh, you aren't able to see the Q&A here, but there's some wonderful feedback thanking you for your time. Everyone has fully enjoyed everything you've shared with us today. So thank you so much. It's always great when you get to hear directly from the user. It's the most powerful. And the audience today is very grateful for your time. Yes, thank you, everybody. And uh, Oliver and Sri, it was a pleasure doing the webinar with you guys. So I hope uh, everybody enjoyed. And uh, yeah, and uh, stay secure. Yes, yeah, and I think it's perfect. It's perfect that you did the webinar from one of your ships. So that's, agreed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, you can see authentic. how good our communication is. That we can really we are right now in the middle of sea and and webinar still working with good. with yeah. next to other passengers. Yeah, we need some of your free internet over where we are. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Colin. And.
For those of you joining, thank you for attending our webinar today. We hope you found great insight and value. And with that, we will see you on the next one. Thank you. Thanks.